Hey everybody, it's March 2019 and everybody's coming back from Lunar New Year. The factories are kicking back up in China and there's kind of a lull in the big box uh, or big hoopla games to be put on Kickstarter right now. A lot of the campaigns have already been through. Everybody spent their Christmas money, so they're kind of holding off until uh, Easter you know, whenever the kids get some more cash. But that doesn't mean that there's nothing going on. I'm going to start talking about a couple of games that are already available. Uh, got to play some Lovecraftian themed and some adult, not in the uh, pornographic way, but for adult um, card games and some other stuff we'll talk about. You can get those now. Then we'll talk about some upcoming games and other types of uh, things you might be interested in. And I'll follow it up by playing a game with you. So I had some ideas about that. And I'll throw some artwork up just to uh, round things out. If you have any thoughts, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them. I had a thought that some of the commentators were feeling that they were locked in of uh, their understanding of my Street Masters content. There's over a septillion different combinations of things you can do in Street Masters. So I didn't think if I showed people how a stage operated as a preview it would be that big of a deal. But I just want to tell you, if you're following my Street Master stuff, you don't have to follow it. You don't have to um, do things exactly how I did them. It takes forever for me to make those, uh, those uh, playthrough videos like 36 hours to 90 hours in some instances and I just play through in the most efficient way possible not the most fun way possible but the most efficient just to show people rules and different things like that so if you're following that content thank you very much otherwise let's get on to it first in the Lovecraft theme stuff we have Pandemic Reign of Thulu you can get that now it's on Amazon for about 40 bucks in the US as of March 2019 and I had long suspected that this would be a great gateway game to bring people into the cosmic horror world, people that had never uh, heard of uh, anything Lovecraft and had never played Pandemic. They were happy that the small board size fit onto a small table, and while we were eating some snacks, showed them how the game worked, they wanted to play immediately. And this is the type of person that never wants to play games, <laughs> never wants to play anything complicated, and they were hooked immediately. So uh, my suspicions were confirmed. This was a great gateway game to bring someone in to um, that had never done anything with the hobby before. And if I can get them into Arkham Horror, I'll know it's been fully successful. But at a minimum, absolute minimum, it got me to have someone play some games with me, which is kind of rare. And that's not the only game they got so excited they were willing to jump in and play CIA Collection Deck. Now, if you've been in the hobby a long time, you know that games are good for teaching different concepts. You use it for kids, they learn how to do coding, they learn how to um, do management, different things, uh, lots of different skills, not just for kids, it's for adults too. And that has not been lost on the military and the intelligence agencies in the United States. The military used to have, I think it was called Army of Two, might have been Army of One, but they had a first and third person shooter for a long time. It was one of like the AAA games of its time, and it was used as a recruitment tool. And the CIA, they had this secret game called Collection Deck, and they have many more of them. But what they would do is use it to get the, um, I don't know if they were recruits or if they were trainees or what their designation was, but they would use it to make them think in certain ways and about different tools and intelligence and how it would operate towards certain goals. And one person went to DEF CON, they were the designer, and they talked about it. Well, in America, we have this thing called the Freedom of Information Act. And someone put in a request for all of the uh, tools, all of the cards, all of the, the tokens, everything possible to get a, a hold of this game because it turned out it was actually fun. And 
a lot of companies they downloaded it and they were trying to make sense of it well one of them is diegetic games and there was so much stuff redacted that they basically had to recreate the game and they turned it into a game called collect it all we got to play it this weekend and the uh, first thing I'm gonna tell you is that the rule book is not that informative there's a lot of stuff you're gonna miss out on and you just have to play through and mess around with it um, I'm gonna probably do a video explaining what I think the game works like and hopefully the people at diegetic games will either correct me once the video is up and I can take it down and put a new one up that explains everything properly or uh, you know that's the best I can hope for maybe another player will uh, look it up I've seen some weird weird reviews for this game they're like it's leftist propaganda it's like no it's stuff that was directly taken from Freedom of Information Act requests just because it's a game that the CIA uses and uh, it's not left or right wing has nothing to do with that is it computer network exploitation Iran missile testing foreign material exploitation really hard target misinformed sources um, the reality checks are things that go against you they're like the um, can randomly happen and all the other players will throw those in to throw you off and you'll use all of your various um, you have a crisis in play and you're gonna have different tools like a computer network exploit that you can use to solve that problem and everybody's gonna be working against you as a uh, to take that game they're trying to screw each other over and I think we got it figured out it was a lot of fun and uh, I you can get it for 29 bucks from the Diegetic Games website. Yeah, the Kickstarter is long over, but the game is fun. You want to be an adult to have an idea of what these things are. If you're not a newsy person, then you might need a military or intelligence background to understand why everything is what it is. But if that doesn't matter to you, then just the mechanics of the game alone were uh, a whole lot of fun so if you have a bunch of friends that normally just sit around and play cards against humanity because they're not that imaginative this is a good kick in the pants because it makes them have to think about things that are real life issues and that will help you in the game by knowing more because there is one type of card you can throw out and it will make you have to justify the tools that you're using in order to complete the crisis and that's really probably in my opinion where the uh, value for the intelligence agencies comes in but uh, I'll throw links in and like I said those two games this weekend got people in and we're going on to the new stuff and first up is a game that I'm not gonna get but if you get invite me over to play it's Throw Throw Burrito by Alan Lee, the guy that makes Exploding Kittens. I don't know if Matt Inman from The Oatmeal is doing the art on this, but it's very similar to everything else. It is a beanbag game. That means you have to throw a beanbag shaped like a burrito at people to play the game. I do not have the space or a resilient enough room to have adults or children throwing bean bags at each other and not break everything. I have a ton of little painted miniatures, so I just can't get this game. There's Everything's too fragile in uh, my home, and I'm not going to play in the garage, which is taken up by jagged metal and dangerous equipment. But if you get it, and you have a yard, and you have people that are ready to play, invite me over, because I want to play this too. It's going to end at the end of March, and it'll be just as big as everything else that the Exploding Kittens people did. At this time, it's over one million. It's gonna definitely go to Target. There might be some extra stuff in the Kickstarter exclusives, but chances are you'll be able to play this if you uh, eventually do have kids old enough in a couple years that they're not gonna break everything. And uh, maybe you have a family reunion or uh, some type of other event. It used to be really big to have corporate events that you'd have to do like trust falls and other stuff. 
I had uh, one of those when I used to work for Mattel, and we just went and did laser tag. And it was great shooting the president and vice president with the laser tag because, you know, it was the only uh, little bit of revenge because three weeks later they just laid everyone off anyway. But uh, now you get to chuck a beanbag at their head, so definitely suggest it for your next Christmas party. It's supposed to arrive in your home by September. These guys are usually pretty good, but I'd say probably closer to October for it to actually get there, which makes it just in time for an office Christmas or other type of holiday party. So definitely throw that one out there if uh, you want to get it, or if you just want to hit someone in the head with a beanbag. Next up, we have a much smaller game that is not currently funded, and that is Into the Dead by Pickpock. If you need another zombie game, if you're a fan of the mobile game, then it's kind of a no-brainer. I don't know if this is truly faithful to the mobile game experience, but it's made by the same people. The miniatures, if you need more stuff like Zombicide, if you're super into the zombie theme, if you want something that looks more like Left 4 Dead than what Zombicide offers in that more cartoony space, then this is probably for you. It's more of a realistic scale than the heroic scale. And it does offer solo, age is 13 and up. Uh, there's dogs, there's weapons, dashboards, basically what you would expect. There's a $90 option, but if you're going to be watching this and you're looking for Kickstarter stuff, you're probably not going to go for the cheapest thing. You're probably going to go for the more expensive one. So I threw up the image of the 150. Resident Evil 2 started delivering to people. There's lots of Zombicide stuff out there. There's still Zombicide and Invader pending. So this one is kind of having a hard time finding an audience. So if there's someone out there that wants more, can't get enough, Rick Grimes is no longer on The Walking Dead. So you need something else to keep you going, then this is for you. I would hope, I don't know where the country is that they are lo made the mobile game from. It doesn't say what city it's from. And normally I like to look at that, especially for a first time creator, but they do have the money from the mobile game. So hopefully they have enough funding to keep it going. It will be a little bit of a risk, but so was Ambicide at a certain time. Then we have another small game that's struggling to get funded. It is Legends of Novus. And they say it is a sandbox style fantasy adventure game. But it appears to be mainly card driven. And there's a big board and a bunch of other you know, things that you would normally see, but no minis, tracking cubes, that type of thing. And I think the biggest problem for them why they're not getting funding is if you look at the box, and then you look at the left of the box, you see the cards. They do not match up. If you look at the one on the box on the right, it looks like something that would be possibly Lovecraftian. And then you have basic fantasy things on the left that look very clean. The one on the right looks like it would be perfectly uh, ready to pop into some type of cosmic horror setting. And that is absolutely not the game that you're looking at. So the first thing that people see is going to be the box at the top and they're going to find out, oh, that's not the game I was thinking of. And when they see the box at the top, they're going to be like, oh, that's not the type of game I like if they were looking for fantasy stuff. Back, way back in the late 90s when I was working for Interplay, we had one of the best games ever made, Planescape Torment. And it had a Rasta looking Smurf on the cover in blue and orange because people were buying a lot of the Trophy Hunter series of games and it had an orange cover. Um, that means one of the best games ever made had almost no sales because of a very poor box decision. And I think that might be what's happening here just from my personal experience of having to deal with that type of stuff way, way back when, when I was doing video game testing. And I think it deserves a second look. It might be something that you would be interested in. It seems to be the sandbox thing. They need more explanation as to how that doesn't mean that there's no story. 
Now just sandbox. Oh, you run around and then there's missions. Okay. Now I need you to show me that there's a centralized story that has a bunch of other stuff going on like Skyrim does where 90% of the world was not the main mission but there was a main mission of some kind just to give it some throughput and you know just a, just a line to follow when you needed one and that seems to be something that these guys haven't really shown uh, yeah we'll see we'll see how it goes right now they're really struggling to get that funding but I think you should give them a at least a cursory glance especially if you're going to be waiting for tainted grail for a really long time this might fit that same audience not necessarily with the minis type of exploration but a card type of exploration in a fantasy setting then we have consumption by colossal games this game is for your girlfriend or her friends or your buddy's girlfriend when you can't get a game night together with anything else because they don't like this or they don't like that this is about dieting and a lot of annoying people will be able to jump right on board with this and be a little less annoying because you're playing a game this is a sanity uh, type of game the type you just have in your collection just to be able to tune out and play something and not have to listen to whatever the other thing is because you can make them focus on it and then you don't lose your friends because you know you can just tune into the game that's how I see this game I don't know that it'll be fun I don't know that the mechanics exist but I think that this type of game is absolutely necessary to have in your collection on certain days when you spend two or three days in a cabin with somebody because it's a vacation and they thought it would be great to bring their brand new significant other that you can't stand and otherwise they would just sit there and be like oh I'll watch you play well this is one of those type of games that the themes not too complicated it's not too weird and you can kind of catch on board with the idea of here's some food calories it's made by a nutritionist who cares you want it made by a game designer right <laughs> you want somebody who knows how to make a game to make the game but like I said in the very beginning of this uh, episode I talked about a gateway game that brought people into things I was interested in and this might be the type of thing that you have as a sacrificial night that will allow you to the next night play the game you want to play and maybe that game will be Winterborn which requires two to four players to play it's supposed to be a type of unique worker placement game in the Euro style and it was one of the Stonemeyer games design day top four 2018 winners it may be good it's hard to tell from the Kickstarter exactly how the game plays and hopefully by the time that March 22nd deadline rolls out there will be a few more reviews to see if it will be interesting and fun but this might be the type of thing that uh, you bring to that cabin out in the winter when it finally arrives in February of 2020 and uh, you're done skiing for the day or sledding or throwing snowballs at each other or just freezing your butt off and now it's time for cocoa and booze this may be the game for you if that's uh, something that you're interested in it seems to have a Viking style and I think it just basically runs off of these hexes if this is something that you're really interested in give them a look but maybe that's not the only type of game you're into maybe you're into something that is basically a ripoff of Frank Frazetta and other stuff like that in an RPG space with uh, Conan and other game systems but it doesn't matter because it's so damn pretty yeah I know the picture on the right is almost just perfectly a ripoff of the pose and the composition of Frank Frazetta's death dealer but it doesn't matter because the guy that does the art for this game is fantastic he has some they're probably reference materials from actual life models but the painting is done remarkably well the themes are all really good and yeah this is basically a stolen image from uh, one of the most famous fantasy artworks of all time but 
all of the rest of the stuff that the guy has on DeviantArt and his other galleries are, as far as I can tell, original. He's got an H.P. Lovecraft piece that is remarkable, and I don't know if he's getting nude models or what he's getting, but some artist in France, never heard of the guy before, he might have the bona fides to rock the world, I don't know, but from just what I can see, this system, the it may be the art alone that makes it worth the uh, purchase. It's about 90 euros, which is about $125. It's going to fund just before Brexit and then come out after Brexit. I don't know how that will affect the uh, funding. I don't know how that will affect the shipping. And who knows, the world could be in the dystopian, uh, you know, future that people have been predicting. And we may need a RPG system like this, not just to kill time, but possibly to give us some ideas on how to survive. So uh, just throwing that out there for you. This is an interesting one. And if nothing else, click on it, go to the guy's deviant art and his, uh, his other websites that he's got with the artwork and just bask because it's uh, it's really beautiful stuff then ending in april we have another game that is heavily investing in good art and that's fight your friends it is called a fun fast deck dueling game that's their tagline i don't know if it's fun or fast you have to try that out but definitely go in and look at the art if you're a fan of comic books then it looks like they hired just a ton of comic book artists not the really weird ones that I've been seeing that you know should have stayed in vertigo but uh, you know the the mainstays in uh, the big selling books that get the most attention that seems to be the theme you got the Joker looking guy you got a Harley looking girl you got all kinds of very similar themed characters and if it's fast you got friends you got kids, you just want something that it says you can play in 10 minutes, hey, there's your lunch break right there. So uh, give them a look. They're going to be around for a little while. They are just now getting starting out, and they need some attention. So take a look. See what you think. Another game I'm not too sure about the game itself, but God, does it come with beautiful components. Is Necronomicon by Hulu Project. It's going to end pretty quickly. It comes with this awesome looking Necronomicon that you can fit all your pieces and cards into. These uh, pawns are hand painted. I'm pretty sure you have to just get all of them that way. They don't have a ridiculous ton of uh, backers. It's about 200 right now. They're out of Barcelona. I've seen a lot of really cool games come out of Spain. Pandemonium same kind of theme that horror theme they seem to have a culture that is just super welcoming of that type of uh, artwork and uh, even back when i was shopping pretty dead around which is my feature film the people at the film festivals there were like give us the zombie movie give us every zombie movie please come to spain and show the movie and of course you can't afford to go to spain but uh, they were super welcoming and nice people, and I will definitely be happy to purchase more stuff in that theme from Spain. I'm not going to buy another 3D printer from Spain. That was a total disaster. Nothing worked. It was like $600 down the drain, but all the board game stuff has been fine. And uh, even just to have a playing card set, if that's what this is, I don't really understand what the mechanics of this game. It looks like a tarot system, but it's got chips and some type of sanity counter. They really need to go more into depth as to how the game plays and what the game is. But that artwork and having that on your shelf, a Necronomicon like that, that would blow a lot of people's minds. There's one guy, he does a bunch of Joker cosplays. He used to work with some of the guys on... Well, they used to be on the uh, makeup show on sci-fi and I can't think of the name of it right now but uh, it's off the air but he had made his own custom Necronomicon with 
it was like a silicone face. It looked exactly like it came out of Evil Dead. He went through all the pages. He went screen accurate on the whole prop. He put, I don't know if it was vellum or some type of parchment, but uh, he made the pages and tea stained them and did everything like that. And outside of being able to get that beautiful Evil Dead looking Necronomic, in, you can get this one for about 100 euros. Um, yeah, it's expensive, but uh, it might be worth it, the craftsmanship alone, just to have something super pretty like that. I like the, it looks like something out of Da Vinci's notebook, a sketchbook style that would be on the pages of the Resident Evil Necronomicon that the cards have. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm going to tell you right now about another game that you can find on Amazon right now. It's going for $26 as of this posting. It normally retails for $75. That's Ray Guns and Rocket Ships. It's out of print according to Scott Rogers who I saw on a Twitch stream where he was playing the game with puppets this morning. So I really just wanted to give you guys the opportunity to jump in and get this great game. You have four different factions. You can play inside and outside of the ships. And it's themed like Toy Story meets uh, Flash Gordon. And Scott Rogers used to be in, in one of the Disney guys. He used to work on Lord of War. He teaches game design. Uh, he's worked on a bunch of different video games. Bunch of He's got the bona fides of the Wuha, And this was just one of these things that uh, he decided to come out with as a passion project. I was lucky enough to jump in on the first Kickstarter. I got to show off the first fully painted game uh, to Scott when he was down in Anaheim at the Unsung Brewery on one of their tabletop days and uh, got to play the game for the first and only time because it's hard to get people to play a game, especially one with uh, reading involved and you have to learn some rules. But uh, I would recommend it for kids over the age of 10 can probably understand it pretty quickly. They, uh, the minis that you see here are not the right colors. I don't know why they use that image. They're green and purple and blue and they're very well balanced. The game is fun and you can get it for a third the cost of its MSRP and it's out of print. So this might be your last chance to get it and support Scott because super nice guy and it's a good game. And that's going to end the game coverage. So what I'm going to do is show you guys a concept that I had of a game I can play with you. There's a game called Bucket of Doom, and I'm sure you've heard of Cards Against Humanity. And I don't really like the way that the games work individually, but I think there's a way to combine them. I'm going to give you an example. So here's how to play. At the top, we have a problem. The burner is stuck on your hot air balloon and you're floating towards outer space. We've got five cards pulling from the 13,000 or so at the last time I went through and eliminated all the duplicates cards from Cards Against Humanity. And we have the Miracle of Mpreg. Look that one up and clear your browser history. A Meat Dagger. Hmm, what's that? Campaigning for Villainy. It's a gerund, which makes it a noun, which makes it fit. All right. An aggravatingly slow internet connection and a sweaty Dotson. This is all you have while you're stuck on a hot air balloon. How are you going to get out? Well, you got a Dotson, you got meat, the burners on, and a campaign for villainy. Perhaps I would campaign that we have to do something devious to save ourselves and possibly shove the wet, sweaty dachshund into either the air intake or the fuel outlet of the uh, hot air balloon. And unfortunately, that dachshund might not make it. But if it's between me and the dachshund, you know, okay, we're not going to get into the John Wick deal. John Wick is a success because John Wick killed a bunch of people that killed a dog. And I don't want to be the guy, even though that would be the campaign for villainy, 
that would fit in there. Look, I want to hear your suggestions. Okay, we're going towards outer space. If we get high enough, we'll never reach outer space. The balloon's going to pop as soon as we hit a certain level in the atmosphere. We'll probably pass out and die well before then or freeze to death. So we got to do something, right? What's your suggestion? What's going to get us the success we need to float back down to safety? And uh, put that in the comments. We'll pick whatever the best or possibly only entrance are in the next video and we'll throw up another one and if you guys are having fun with it let me know and uh, we'll keep going if you got any suggestions on how we can continue to play this in the comments keep going throw those in if there's something that's got a lot of legs and a lot of uh, interesting options we'll make that next week's puzzle there's no right answer they're all wrong answers which is what's going to make this fun. Going to get that imagination kicked into gear that wasn't working in the conversation that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. And then finally, just because I've been showing some other stuff on the other videos, this is what I've been painting. Uh, it's the Santa Satan from Kingdom Death. And in my Survivor Vision thing that I like to paint with, I made the uh, Christmas lights glow lantern glow and I don't know I really enjoy it I added a bunch of different levels of gloss to the different materials to make it look like latex boots and gloves and that kind of cool stuff and the uh, little antlers are glittery so something that's uh, almost the height of a dollar uh, not in the length of a dollar but the short end of a dollar I don't know I think I got a lot of cool detail out of it show me your stuff what do you got going on Throw it in the comments. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, I do what I can to answer them. Sometimes I don't see the reply to the reply to the reply to the reply, but uh, it does pop up with a new comment every time. And uh, I'll keep making videos and let me know what's interesting. You guys have a good one.